Hello everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. Barbs are a fish with a bit of a reputation. Sometimes it feels like every single member of the genus is known for being boisterous, overbearing, space demanding fish who will easily turn to bullying their tank mates just for something to do. And while for most barbs there is a grain of truth in this, there are others which are perfectly peaceful and really don't deserve such a wicked reputation. And of these, the lovely cherry barb is certainly one such example. When it comes to temperament, these striking fish have more in common with their enormous cousins, the koi carp, than they do with the similar sized tiger barb. I even think cherry barbs look a little bit like a koi. They've got that long torpedo body shape about them and stubby little barbels. They just happen to be only about one hundredth of the size. But what are cherry barbs like to keep and what kind of setup do they need? Well, cherry barbs originate from large, shady pools in Sri Lanka, where they congregate in large schools that can have many hundreds of individuals. These pools are remarkably stable in terms of both their temperature and their pH, and this has had a bit of an effect that cherry barbs can be a tad more picky about their tank conditions when compared to other members of the barb species. They prefer a temperature range that sticks between around 23 and 26 degrees, and a pH that stays as close to neutral as possible, roughly between a 6 and a 7. They can put up with small fluctuations in their tank conditions, water changes for example that only have quite a minimal effect and it only lasts for a few hours anyway, but permanent changes to the tank need to be done much more carefully, because cherry barbs are really quite susceptible to stress and they seem to succumb to it much more quickly than other barbs do. And so if you're thinking about altering something permanent about the tank, like the temperature for example, you need to do so very gradually so that they have time to acclimatise. But in all honesty I have a sneaking suspicion this sensitivity is very much dependent on the strain of cherry barb that you get, and ultimately how overbred they have become. Certainly some cherries I've had in the past have been really quite tough and seem to be able to put up with anything, whereas the ones I've been getting more recently, they are so much more sensitive and perhaps it really is a bit of potluck. It's a case of getting to know your fish and what they can and can't tolerate. One of the many lovely things about cherry barbs though is that although they grow to a very respectable 1.5 inches in length, absolute maximum of 2 inches, though I've never seen one that big, they are still not the most demanding of species when it comes to space. These barbs span that gap between a fish that likes to only swim in open water, like a harlequin for example, and one that likes to explore the more shadowy depths. Cherry barbs like a bit of both, and so they will use the majority of the swimming space you offer them in a tank. This being the case, they are perfectly comfortable in a tank measuring about 60 by 30 centimetres on the base, and will do so without developing any issues. They do prefer a complicated tank to one that's bare, needs to have plants, twigs, even a wonderfully tacky ship ornament, it doesn't matter what's in there so long as it gives them somewhere to hide. They're even perfectly comfortable living in very bright tanks, so long as they have some cover, though I do tend to find they look a bit better if the tank is on the dim side. The males especially seem to put on a more vibrant red if it's a little bit more shadowy in there. Being wonderfully peaceful, cherry barbs make the perfect inhabitant for a community tank. And luckily there are many many species out there who are also happy to live in the same sorts of conditions that cherry barbs like. And so, ultimately, there are a lot of tank mates available to you to choose from. You just need to bear in mind though that cherries do need to be kept in a school of at least six individuals, preferably two males and four females, and they are not the smallest of fish, and so if you're keeping them in a smaller tank, for example one that is 60 by 30 centimetres, then it might be better to set it up as a species only tank, simply because of the amount of space that the cherries are going to take up themselves. If your tank is a little bit bigger though, then I find that cherry barbs get on perfectly well with just about any fish their own size, or ones which are considerably smaller than them as well. I've never even seen them show any aggressive behaviour towards shrimp or shrimplets. Like a lot of barbs, cherries are known as a schooling fish, although to be honest, I tend to find my fish don't really school together. There's no aggression between them, they all get along just fine, they just don't stick together in a really tight group. They're usually off doing their own thing as individuals rather than as one coherent unit, and to be honest this is one of the really appealing factors about cherry barbs. 
It is amazing how much personality they show as individual fish. Some are really bold and they're always out in the front and they're immediately at the front of the tank begging for food as soon as they see you, whereas others are much more shy and they'll hang about in the shadows and keep an eye on you and make sure you're safe before they come out. Some like to feed first, while there are others who are quite happy to just hang around at the back, waiting for the scrum to die down, and then they'll go out and feed in peace. The golden females are definitely more calm than the fiery red males, though, and they will happily be cruising around the tank just on the lookout for some food. The males, on the other hand, tend to be more eager and darting. They go from periods of rest to zipping about all over the place. They don't get into fights with each other, as they display using their colours rather than physical gestures, but the males certainly have a more active and alert nature about them, certainly in comparison anyway to the rather sleepy females. Cherry barbs are even calm when they're feeding, and they will very rarely overeat and cause themselves bloat. This is partly because they only have quite a small mouth in relative to the size of their body, and this is obviously going to reduce the size of food that they can take. But they're also not fussy at all about what they will eat. Cherries will eat just about anything that you put in the tank, from small pellets to bloodworm to brine shrimp, you name it, they will eat it. They just seem to be very good at self-regulating how much they eat, which is really, really useful actually if you're keeping them with much smaller fish like Celestial Pearl Danios or Chili Rasboras. The cherries don't eat everything in sight as soon as it's there in the tank, and this gives the little guys the opportunity to come out and get some food without it all being scoffed away by the more boisterous fish. Breeding cherry barbs is also an uncomplicated affair compared to your average egg scattering species that takes absolutely no care whatsoever of its offspring. A pair placed in a separate breeding tank that's fairly dimly lit and with a pH of around 6 will often spawn the following morning at which point you will need to remove them, because neither adult takes any care of the eggs and they will in fact consume their own eggs or fry if they can find them. And so on the bottom of your tank you will need to have some dense moss or some marbles, something that's there for the eggs to slip away from sight once they've been laid, otherwise their parents will consume them. Once the adults are removed, the tiny little fry will hatch in about three to four days and be free swimming within six to seven, and from there you can care for them the same as you would any other very small fry. Overall, cherry barbs are an easy fish to look after. They're easy to get hold of because they're super popular. They're peaceful, they're gentle, they're not too active, but they're not too still neither. They are in fact a perfectly balanced species, and to be honest, one of my favourites. Although I feel like I say that every video at this rate. <laughs> But anyway, you also get the bonus that the males and females look so different from each other, it's a little bit like having two species for the price of one. Anywho, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about cherry barbs. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!